Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, acne, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, a health challenge, you or a loved one may be dealing with, something you may have heard about or read about, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let us help clear up any confusion for you. That's what we're here for. The world of nutrition can be pretty confusing. Bright side is your your light to clear up the confusion. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about our Truth Skin Health products or ingredients or anything you may uh, may have heard about that you want clarification on, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the Bright Side, please call the Bright Side Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. Or head over to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can order products right off the website, or you can sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team off the website as well. CriticalHealthNews.com, PharmacistBen.com, and BrightSideBen.com. We've got blog posts and news stories up at all three websites. And you can also purchase Yongevity products and for a one-time $25 fee. Join the BrightSideBen team right off the websites as well. If you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, the website is TruthTreatments.com or Retinol 5% Gel. Truth Balm, Truth Serum, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, all packed with vitamin C. Truth Retinol 5% Gel also has 5% Retinol, never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, oils, emulsifiers, water, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health formulations. If you're dealing with acne blemishes or you want to prevent acne blemishes or dark spots or aging skin, if you're looking for something to help mitigate or reduce the formation of fine lines and wrinkles, vitamin C and retinol are your go-tos. And you can find all our Truth Treatment products, all our vitamin C rich and retinol dense Truth Treatment products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to the Bright Side, friends. Thanks for listening. We were talking green tea. We were talking yesterday about PCOS and insulin and blood sugar. Keeping in mind that the best way to lower your blood sugar is not to eat the sugar, not to eat the refined carbs. And keep in mind also that protein can get turned into carbs for you guys who are eating lots of meat and steak, going Atkins or going paleo, and you can't figure out why you're not losing weight or why your blood sugar is not dropping, protein gets turned into sugar, and protein gets turned into sugar pretty darn readily. It's a very easy process for the body to turn protein into sugar. So if you're eating lots of protein, but you're not working out or you're not recovering from something, you're not somehow using that protein, very likely that protein will get turned into sugar, and then it will get turned into fat. So keeping your, paying attention to the kinds of foods you're eating is always going to be the most important strategy for lowering blood sugar and for dealing with PCOS. There's also supplements that you could use. We talk about them all the time on this program. The ketogenic diet is probably your most effective way of eating if you want to 
reduce your blood sugar, or if you have PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, or if you want to lose weight. The ketogenic diet, of course, is a high fat, moderate protein, low carb, low calorie diet. Low calorie is the key. High fat, low calorie, and low carb, and then moderate protein diet. If you're jonesing for sugar, use fiber. You can also use glutamine powder. You can also work on raising serotonin levels. Serotonin uh, requires a little bit of insulin for its production, and it may very well be that our desires to eat carbohydrates is really a disguised way of, low, of raising our serotonin levels, of self-medicating with, with, uh, with carbs in order to bump up serotonin levels. So doing something that can amp up serotonin without going into sugar without going into carbohydrates can be very helpful if you're dealing with sugar cravings. The sun will increase serotonin levels, getting some sun exposure every day. Vitamin B6 can help. Vitamin B3 can help. The amino acid tryptophan also. It's analog 5-HTP. These are all helpful for upregulating serotonin. And then we come to green tea, which is can be very helpful for uh, folks who are, on, who are on an anti-diabetic program, the active ingredient EGCG has been shown to be effective for both, both blood sugar and for insulin, according to an article published in the Journal of Agricultural and Food Chemistry and posted on the WebMD website. WebMD actually has got lots of good stuff about green tea. Quote, green tea represents a potentially inexpensive, non-toxic, and in fact, pleasurable blood sugar lowering agent and may be a simple, inexpensive means of preventing or retarding human diabetes and the ensuing complications, unquote. This is research that was published uh, on the uh, website or posted on the uh, website WebMD. Other research, this one published uh, May 2005, found that green tea could prevent the formation of diabetic cataracts. Cataracts uh, are a candying, a caramelization, a glycation, if you like, prefer to be a little bit more technical, of the lens on the eye. This is one of the reasons why most people, or many people, I should say, will get cataracts as they get older. It's a sign that the body is starting to lose control over its ability to handle sugar. Cataracts and glaucoma, for that, uh, for that matter, and macular degeneration, have a, um, a, a, there's a large role for sugaring and for lack of blood sugar control when it comes to these kinds of eye health issues, and using green tea can be very helpful. Green tea has been shown to lower insulin levels. It's been shown to improve insulin resistance and to improve ap uh, decrease appetite and improve satiety. Male rats given EGCG, that's the active ingredient in green tea, male rats given EGCG injections were found to consume 50 to 60% less food than control rats and also to have significant reductions in blood glucose, blood fats, blood triglycerides, and blood cholesterol. The best way to take advantage of green tea's anti-diabetic properties is to drink green tea with your meals or even better, before your meals. If you drink your green tea before your meals, you'll actually find yourself eating a lot less food and your blood sugar markers will improve as well. If you go off the wagon and you go crazy on bread or pasta, or rice or sweets or some kind of processed carbohydrates, you might want to consider using some green tea capsules with your meals or after your meals, maybe one or two after meals. Using green tea capsules first thing in the morning can give you a little bit of a caffeine buzz, if the caffeine's a problem, you can always use decaf capsules. Decaf green tea capsules are readily available. You can get 100 green tea capsules for less than $10. Stuff is really, really cheap. You can make your own green tea capsules by buying some empty capsules and crushing up some green tea, green tea leaves, and making your own capsules. Keep in mind, however, green tea is definitely better used on an empty stomach. The active ingredients are not really absorbed very well. The, the uh, EGCG and a couple of the other active ingredients are not really absorbed very well out of the intestine. Uh, so you want to make sure that you're using it on an empty stomach. Less than 2% of the catechins, that is the active ingredients in green tea, are bioavailable. So uh, if you are using your green tea with food, it may interfere with a little bit of the absorption. So it's always best to take your green tea on an empty stomach. Nonetheless, if you do go off the wagon, eat a lot of carbs, green tea can be helpful. Green tea. Fully okay, we 
are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got lines open. 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, green tea or the longevity products or our Truth Skin Health products, if you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, head over to truthtreatments.com. And if you want to purchase any of our longevity products, including the Beyond Tangy Tangerine or the Healthy Start Pack, the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients, head over to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. You can also call the phone team at 866-735-2470. Okay, so before we went to break, we are talking about green tea on an empty stomach. It's best taken on an empty stomach. It's not really absorbed. The active ingredients in green tea are not really absorbed very well out of the gut. Food might interfere with that. that nonetheless, that having been said, uh, the benefits for uh, the green green tea's benefits for uh, reducing the impact of carbohydrates on blood sugar may make it worth your while to take a couple green tea capsules or sip on green tea after your meals. If you really want to max out on the absorption, though, you want to take uh, your green tea on an empty stomach. The body does detoxify green tea actives pretty well, so. Uh, uh, if your liver has, has up, if, you, uh, if you're doing prescription drugs or if you're smoking cigarettes or if you're drinking a lot of alcohol, your liver will upregulate its detoxification enzymes. Your liver will be more prone to detoxify substances the more toxins you're taking. And that means you may uh, lose some of the benefit of your green tea. Just drink a little bit more green tea. And oh, by the way, black pepper is a very interesting is very interesting stuff. Black pepper contains something in it called piperine, P-I-P-E-R-I-N-E, -E, and using black pepper extracts, which you can find on the internet, or piperine extracts, P-I-P-E-R-I-N-E, -E, can help you increase absorption of lots of things, including green tea. So maybe use a couple of piperine, a couple of piperine extract capsules uh, with your green tea. That can help improve uh, improve the absorption of your green tea, of green tea, and of, for that matter, of all supplements, and for that matter, of medication too. If you want to reduce your dose of medication, using piperine with your medication can help uh, can help you wean yourself off or lower your dose of your medication. It can also bump up the body's ability to absorb nutrients, supplemental nutrients, as well as green tea. The constituents in in uh, black pepper are really, really very interesting. So if you're supplementing with amino acids, minerals, vitamins, using some piperine with your supplements can help improve absorption, likewise with green tea and likewise with your prescription drugs if you're on prescription medication. All right, so a couple more things I want to say about green tea and then we will move on to the most powerful and the most important of all and the most abundant of all the uh, plant nutrients and that is the bioflavonoids or the flavonoids as they're technically known as. The bioflavonoids slash flavonoids are usually associated with vitamin C. You'll see vitamin C supplements with bioflavonoids. The bioflavonoids help the body process and utilize vitamin C. They are just fabulously, fabulously important. And as I say, they are probably the most important of all the plant chemicals. And we're going to spend some time talking about the flavonoids. A couple more things I want to say about green tea first. Uh, we talked about green tea for uh, and its benefits for for heart disease, for cardiovascular disease. We talked about green tea for mitigating the effects of diabetes and for stabilizing blood sugar. Heart disease is the leading cause of death in this country and around the world, so green tea can help with the leading cause of death. Diabetes is the third leading cause of death. Green tea can help you there. Now I want to take a couple minutes talking about the second leading cause of death, which is cancer, and green tea's benefits on, uh, on improving and preventing metastases and tumor formation and cancer in general. There's numerous studies that talk about green tea being cancer protective, especially for hormonal cancers, cancers of the breast, cancer of the prostate. We talked about DHT inhibition yesterday and the day before, and this is one of the reasons why, can why green tea is so beneficial for cancer. It helps stabilize male hormones. That means it's going, and female hormones for that matter, that means it's going to have a, a, a beneficial effect on reproductive cancers. It also has an ability 
to uh, prevent the formation or to reduce the production of a enzyme called UPA, also known as urokinase. This enzyme is important for cancer metastases. And as it turns out, urokinase, UPA inhibitors, are found throughout the plant kingdom. And this is one of the most important anti-cancer mechanisms for, um, for herbs and fruits and vegetables and botanicals in general. Some of the most powerful urokinase UPA inhibitors are found in turmeric. And there's also powerful UPA, urokinase inhibitors, found in green tea. And this is actually thought to be one of the main mechanisms for green tea's well-recognized anti-cancer properties. According to professor of urology at the University of Toledo, Dr. Jersey Jenkin, writing in the journal Nature, June 1997, quote, EGCG, that's the active ingredient in green tea, EGCG might inhibit cancer formation in many different ways. However, we postulate that the well-known anti-cancer activity of green tea is driven by the inhibition of urokinase, unquote. I'm sorry, uh, one of the most frequently overexpressed enzymes in human cancers, unquote. In addition to cancers of the breast and the prostate and the cervix and uh, the ovaries, the reproductive system in general, green tea has also been shown to be helpful for digestive cancers, for liver cancer, for lung cancer, and topically applied green tea has been shown to inhibit the tumor promoting effects of, uh, the skin tumor promoting effects of various carcinogenic substances. Green tea administered in drinking water also inhibits skin tumor formation that is induced by solar radiation. It's probably a good idea to sip on a little green tea as you're laying out in the sun. We love the sun, but if you're worried about uh, skin cancer, sip on some green tea while you're out in the sun. And actually, you can put green tea right on your skin. There's benefits to using green tea topically. Green tea topically has been used as a DHT inhibitor for folks who are dealing with acne patients. You can make your own green tea topicals. You don't have to buy anything in the store. You can make your own fresh green tea topical products. Just add some brewed green tea to your favorite cream or your favorite lotion. If you add a little bit of, if you want to make an oatmeal mask, you add a little bit of green tea to some oatmeal. Instead of the water, use green tea water. You can make a a green tea mask is an anti-acne treatment. There are ingredients in oatmeal that have a soothing and anti-redness quality and the combination of green tea and oatmeal can be very helpful for folks dealing with, at least for the appearance of acne blemishes or oily skin. You can use uh, brewed green tea as a toner. You can make it straight. Just make tea and put it in the refrigerator and keep it as a toner. You can add a little wine or a little apple cider vinegar, maybe some lemon juice. If you have some lactic acid or glycolic acid, you can get a, make yourself a nice green tea peel. The green tea is anti-irritating. If you boil some green tea in a pot and put your face near the steam, you can give yourself a nice facial, nice steam facial. Don't go too close. You don't want to burn yourself. But if you're uh, just close enough so the steam contacts your skin, you'll open up your pores, and the green tea can have a nice anti-inflammatory effect. Green tea's got tremendous antioxidants as well as antimicrobial properties too. So in addition to helping stabilize hormones, DHT and testosterone that are associated with acne, the antimicrobial properties and the antioxidant properties of green tea can also contribute to its acne fighting benefits. And not only does green tea prevent blemishes, prevent the formation of pimples and improve the appearance of oily skin, it also has a calming effect and a soothing effect so it can help reduce redness and irritation, especially if you're dealing with rosacea in association with your acne. All right, so the last thing I want to talk about with green tea is a very interesting active ingredient that we just started to, just really discovered a few years ago. It's called theanine, and we will, uh, well, we'll finish that. We'll finish this up when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. Pharmacist Ben here. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, and 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. You can also purchase products Longevity products off brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. And you can also call the phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. I also want to give my 
uh, Choose Skin Health products a plug, truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. If you're looking for treatment type products, I developed all my products as treatments in my compounding pharmacy. These are not skincare products. This is not a skincare line. These are treatment products for dealing with either aging skin or blemish prone skin or hyperpigmented skin. And the reason I call these treatments is because you only use tiny little doses of my Truth Treatment products. They'll last you for months. Truth Retinol 5% gel can last you six or seven months for a one ounce jar. That's unheard of in the world of skincare. These aren't skin care products, they're skin treatment products and you can find it all about them at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, got a couple lines open, and we will get your phone calls at 844-236-6010 in just a moment. A couple interesting stories I want to get to, and then we'll uh, we'll hit the phones. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, or Truth Skin Health products, or skin health questions, or questions about formulations or ingredients, or if you just want to comment or success share a success story, 844-236-6010 is our number. Okay, from the journal, what journal is this from actually? I don't see it here. Cell host and microbe. And this was reported today. Gut microbiome may hold clues to irritable bowel disease treatments likelihood of success. The constitution of an IBD patient's microbiome may help predict whether treatment with a therapeutic antibody, that's a drug, will prove fruitful according to an early uh, early stage study. Treatment for inflammatory bowel diseases like ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease is currently a process of trial and error. Try one treatment, look for the response. If a patient does not improve, try the next treatment. Work on your microbiome is the bottom line here, folks. The gut bacteria is the major parameter for determining the health of the colon, whether you're healthy or whether you're not healthy. If you're healthy and you want to stay that way, make sure you're eating fermented food and using your ultimate nightly essence. If you're not healthy, if you got IBD or ulcerative colitis, even if you're on a prescription drug, your prescription drug will work more effectively when you take care of the microbiome, which is the uh, point made by another study, how our gut bacteria affect cancer risk and response to treatment. The trillions of bacteria living in our gut called the gut microbiome can help determine our risk of cancer as well as how we might respond to cancer treatment. That is the gut microbiome will determine the effect of your chemotherapy drugs. It will determine how effective your chemotherapy drugs will be. And this is a very important point for folks who are taking drugs. If you're on prescription medication, using nutritional supplementation, taking care of your gut microbiome, taking care of the body in general will make your prescription drugs more effective. I get this question all the time. Will, this, will uh, these uh, uh, nutritional supplements interfere with my medication? Or you'll hear doctors say, no, you better get off all your vitamins, get off all your minerals because they'll interfere with your drugs. Wrong bad advice. The fact of the matter is, is nutritional supplementation will make your drugs more effective. Taking care of the gut microbiome will make your prescription drugs more effective. And it will allow you to wean yourself off your meds at, or at least reduce the dose. If you're on a prescription drug long term, your number one health goal should be to first lower the dose and eventually wean yourself off these medications. Weaning yourself off the medications is really the goal, but at least lower the dose and getting on a good nutritional supplement program can help you do the, just that. All right, last study I want to talk about here, and then we'll get your phone calls, 844-236-6010. Uh, this one is a paper titled, A Brief Mindfulness Intervention is Associated with Negative Outcomes in a Randomized Control Trial Among Chemotherapy Patients. In other words, uh, new research has shown that the use of mindfulness a mindfulness training in cancer patients can produce negative results to their well-being. And this is compared to simple relaxation techniques. Mindfulness is the idea of bringing your full attention to internal and external experiences, according to Lisa Reynolds of the University of Auckland's Department of Psychological Medicine and her colleagues, participants who uh, either did relaxation strategies or mindfulness strategies. The mindfulness patients did not get anywhere near the benefits as the relaxation technique patients. This was published, by the way, in the journal Mindfulness. Relaxation training 
is key, relaxing the body. Now, I believe mindfulness can also be helpful, but mindfulness that leads to relaxation. The key is the relaxation. If mindfulness doesn't lead to relaxation, it's not going to help you. The key is in activating the relaxation nervous system next to, or maybe not next to, maybe even more important than nutritional supplementation is activating the parasympathetic rest and digest nervous system. We should all be doing this at least once a day, focusing on relaxing the body, on activating the rest and digest nervous system. This is where the immune system is. The stress nervous system shuts down the immune system. The stress nervous system makes it difficult to recover from disease, makes it difficult to recover from wounds and trauma. On the other hand, the relaxation nervous system, which is activated by deep breathing techniques, which is activated by muscle relaxation techniques, which is activated by visualization techniques, massage, Reiki, yoga, meditation. These are all wonderful ways to activate the parasympathetic relaxation nervous system and enjoy all the healing and health and anti-aging benefits that are associated with activation of this relaxation rest and digest nervous system. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's hit the phones. Good morning, Keith in New Jersey. What's going on? Welcome to the Bright Side. Hey, Ben. Hey, buddy. I have one What's question up? for you. Yes, sir. Uh, when consuming uh, ground-up uh, flax seeds and uh, chia seeds also, does that by any chance affect the absorption of any supplements you might be taking, like the Healthy Star Pack or other supplements? Yes. Yes, it will affect absorption. The um, fiber sticks to things. It sticks to bad things and it sticks to good things. So you probably don't want to take your supplements at the same time that you take your fiber. Um, that having been said, if you have to do them all at once, it's not going to be the end of the world to do them together. But to maximize absorption of your supplements, it's probably a good idea to take your fiber on an empty stomach. Using fiber on an empty stomach will also swell the belly and reduce the appetite. So uh, I do my fiber first thing in the morning on an empty stomach. Uh, by the way, fiber is not just fiber. Or I should say flaxseed is not just fiber. You're also getting wonderful essential fats. You're getting wonderful amino acids. You're getting a vitamin E. E. You're probably getting some minerals as well. So you're going to get nutritional value out of your flax seeds, uh, and that nutritional value will probably be available to you. Uh, but uh, if, you're, if you're taking your Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients, your supplements, it's probably a good idea to take them separate from, uh, from the flax or chia seeds or, or any kind of ground-up seeds that you're using for fiber. Does that answer okay, your question? How long, like after you take an the flax seeds, do you recommend take your supplements an hour? Hour or two, yeah. So that's, that's plenty oh, of time. Okay. Okay? Okay. Thanks a lot, Ben. Yep. All right, buddy. Thanks. Thanks All for right, calling, Keith. Care. Have a great day, man. All right. We will uh, get your calls if you're on hold when we come back from our break. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. is the number got lines open for you if, if you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today or if you have a problem client or patient or if you yourself have a health challenge that you want help dealing with we are here for you 844-236-6010 is our number of course if you have questions about the longevity products or our truth skin health formulations 844-236-6010 is our number let's go to on in california good morning on oh good morning ben how you doing uh, I just had an ultrasound on my carotid artery, and I have a blockage. I was wondering how I could get rid of the blockage. Well, a couple things. First of all, what do they tell you? Uh, what do they want to do? They didn't say anything. They just told you it was blocked. Yeah. How did they tell you how much it was blocked? What the blockage oh, about was? About eighty percent. Oh my goodness, on. Uh, blockages in the arteries are a sign that the connective tissue is starting to break down. The body will deposit. Uh, cholesterol and, and calcium and various substances that form plaques to kind of act as a band-aid to patch up those weakened arteries. So uh, you got to focus on strengthening the body and strengthening the connective tissue and strengthening the arteries. But even uh, more imperatively, more importantly, uh, right away, you want to do something to clear that blockage out. Have you, you know about chelation therapy? Have you heard of that? 
Yes. Can we talk about, that's probably the first thing I would think about is go to, uh, you're, in, you're in Santa Cruz, aren't you? Uh, you're, in, you're in Salinas. Yeah, uh, you, you can find a naturopath who can de do chelation therapy. Everybody benefits from chelation therapy. You don't have to be dealing with a health challenge, plaques or uh, uh, some kind of uh, blood toxicity to benefit from chelation therapy. It's just a great way to clean the blood. So uh, chelation therapy is the first thing I would think about. Improving circulation can also help by doing movement and hyper or, or uh, deep breathing techniques. You can also do hyperbaric oxygen. That can help. There are also nutrients that can act to magnetically purify the blood, to chelate toxins out of the blood. And that's what chelation is. Selenium is a natural, uh, nu I should say nutritional chelating agent. Vitamin C is a nutritional chelating agent. Bentonite clay can have chelating effects. Sulfur and NAC can have chelating properties. Also improving the blood flow uh, using nutritional supplements aside from chelation can also be important. Coenzyme Q10 is a must have nutritional supplement. I can't emphasize that enough. You're now starting to see commercials for coenzyme Q10 supplements. I don't know, you know, you don't need to have anything fancy. There's lots of ways to get coenzyme Q10 supplements. They're pretty much readily available. By the way, coenzyme Q10 comes in two varieties. One is called ubiquinol, and another is called ubiquinone. Ubiquinone is a little bit more expensive. I'm sorry, ubiquinol, O-L, is a little bit more expensive. It's a little bit more premium. Uh, but people get great benefits from the ubiquinone, so it's not, not that big a deal. But if you, you want to go premium, go ubiquinol versus ubiquinone. And anybody, well, everybody should be using CoQ10 in my opinion, but especially if you're dealing with a cardiovascular health issue. Magnesium also acts like a vasodilator. It will help open up blood vessels, and that can improve blood flow to the heart. Same with niacin, vitamin B3. Uh, I'd be using the ultimate niacin from Longevity. And the Fucoid Z from Longevity also has a nice blood thinning effect and can help improve circulation. We don't often talk about glucosamine as a blood thinning agent, but it is. And glucosamine is also important for helping strengthen the blood vessels to prevent the cholesterol deposits in the first place. And so using your glucogel caps, uh, anything you can do for arthritis will help you, but the glucogel caps, high aluronic acid, that can also be helpful for cardiovascular health. If you're interested in, in uh, keeping the cholesterol levels down, and, and that's not really a big thing to me, keeping cholesterol levels down. It's much more important to strengthen the arteries. But if you are interested, and I'm surprised they didn't recommend a statin for you, uh, well, the best... Well, I did, but I, said I didn't want any. Okay, well, you're smart. But the best way, just nonsense, the, the, the idiocy of using statin drugs because somebody has a blockage in their heart is just crazy to me. Uh, the problem isn't you're making too much cholesterol. The problem is your blood vessels are weak. However, that being said, the main reason why cholesterol levels go up up, why we produce too much cholesterol or produce high levels of cholesterol is blood sugar. And again, there's a, a major relationship between blood sugar and the heart. That's really the problem when it comes to cardiovascular disease is the insulin and the sugar. So making sure that you're acting, treating yourself as if you were a diabetic, whether you've been diagnosed as such or not, using the sweeties from longevity, your ultimate niacin, zinc is very important for blood sugar. I, I, I mean, I, we talk about this all the time, so I don't want to repeat myself and, and uh, beat a dead horse here, but anything you could do to support blood sugar control, calorie restriction, using fiber with your meals can also help, especially soluble fiber. On, you should be using soluble, you should be using fiber every day, both soluble fiber and insoluble fiber, improving the uh, function of your intestine, improving the function of the liver, and then last but not least, speaking of the intestine, make sure that you're on a good probiotic supplement like uh, the nightly essence. And then one more, uh, your ultimate selenium not in, is not only important for blood sugar control, but the ultimate selenium is also important for cardiovascular health. In fact, that's one of the main reasons why selenium supplementation is so important is for its cardiovascular benefits. It's something Dr. Wallach talked about many years ago, how important selenium is for the heart. It's okay, the on. Yes. Natokinase in the. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot about that. That's great. Oh, natokinase. Yes, yes, yes. You'll get the natokinase and the ultimate enzymes. Good point, on. I forgot to mention yeah, because that. Because I take nine nightly essence. Keep it up. Uh, keep going with it, and keep your sugar. Help. Absolutely. Uh, digestive enzymes in general will help, but natokinase is a, is a wonderful one, and there's natokinase in the ultimate nightly essence. That's one of the reasons why I like the ultimate nightly essence so much is because not only do you get all the bacteria, and you get a big dose of bacteria, and you get multiple strains, but it's the only one I know, the only uh, probiotic supplement that I know of that actually has 
digestive enzymes, and natokinase. For the listeners, natokinase is an especially effective uh, blood purifying, blood thinning uh, a digestive enzyme, and it is very, very helpful for folks who are dealing with cardiovascular health issues or blockages. Good, good point. Good call on that, on. And, and another thing, if I can uh, ask. Sure. I had a, a, a stomach problem that uh, I had very rumbling noises in my uh in You my may gut. not be processing food correctly, and that can definitely be an issue. You know, and bile is... And diarrhea. Yeah, you may be having some kind of digestive health issue. Do the food diary, the elimination diet, calorie restriction. Always focus on the digestive system. And there is a very underappreciated link between digestive health and heart disease. And I personally believe that one of the main reasons for our heart disease epidemic and the fact that it's a leading cause of death is we're not addressing underlying digestive causes. Remember, the triangle of disease is always primal. Heart disease is a secondary health challenge. It's not a primary health challenge. You may need to do something in an emergency type of way uh, to deal with heart issues, but if you want to take care of the heart from a long-term perspective, focus on digestive health, especially the liver and bile also. So use your ultimate enzymes with meals, and you'll get, your, uh, you'll get the, the benefits of the bile salts, and then taking your ultimate enzymes and the ultimate nightly essence on an empty stomach, you'll get the benefits of the enzymes for cleaning the blood. All right, I've got to motivate on. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Have a great day. All right, let's, uh, well, let's give Carl the Truth Raider the last word here. What's up, Carl? How you doing, man? Oh, well, I'm, I'm hanging in there and, and still trying to improve, my good friend, Ben. I okay. went to see my gorgeous little cute dolly, Dennis, this morning. <laughs> okay. And she did a thyroid test, and she did a you, neck and... Your de- uh, wait, your, de- your dentist just did a thyroid test? Yes. She what just, did she do? Well, she just felt around and had me oh, okay. She didn't do a blood test in your thyroid. She just no, no, no. She didn't do anything physically. You sure like she that. was? You sure she was checking the thyroid? Did she tell you she was checking the thyroid? Yeah, she was. She did one, just like a swallow test. Yeah, I think they're looking for cancer, like throat cancer, mouth cancer, something like that. Yes, yes, and I, I came up just fine. But this is the problem I have, and I wanted to find an alternative method to use instead of um, having extractions. But she recommended to have. Uh, the extractions of, of both of my back molar teeth, and then put in a uh, what, what you call like a, a dental. Uh, a, 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 I don't. Know, I, I guess it's a denture. It's a, a, a removable denture for both sides. What's wrong with your teeth? Well, the, the, the uh, she says that there there there's a little bit of infection that's in there, and then and she she wants to she wants to take them both out, but they feel fine. They're very strong, and they were they're the last of the amalgam fillings that I have in there. So it's got like looks like silver. And they're pretty strong and, and sturdy, so I don't want to do that right away. So I wanted to find out something that I can do naturally to cure that. And you were talking about uh, green tea and other things like that earlier in the, in the show. Now, do you, do you, is, there, is there any kind of disease in there, infection or anything like that? Yeah, that's what she said. Is there's a little bit of infection going on Yeah, you might want to try colloidal silver, gargling with colloidal silver, gargling with okay. Lugol solution, iodine solution. But I, I don't like messing around with any infections in the mouth. That okay. can be a really big problem, aside from being... A potential to cause miserable pain. Uh, when you have bacteria in the mouth, uh, uh, infections in the mouth, bacteria can get into the blood and it can cause all kinds of problems. So, really interesting connection between dental health issues and heart disease. And that has to do with uh, infections that get into the bloodstream through the mouth. I wouldn't be messing around that way. If, and I don't know if that's the case. Uh, you may want to get a second opinion, but uh, if you really do have an infection, you want to be careful with that. Carl, I got to go. Okay. That's all the time we have for today, friends. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to y'all later folks. Bye for now.